I know you don't smoke weed. I know this. But I'm gonna get you high today. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Thanks for tuning in to the Inside Man. So today we got Dame Dash responding to Steve Stout. So if y'all don't know who Steve Stout is, Steve Stout used to work with uh, Rockefeller. He was Nas's manager. He'd been in the industry for years. He was just on Club Shay Shay, which is Shannon Shop's podcast. And Shannon bought Dame Dash up. And you already know, here comes the story that's about Dame Dash. So Dane Dash hears about it, and he wants to respond in his own words what happened, what went on. So this right here, this is crazy because Dame Dash actually said he slapped the shit out of Steve Stout. Y'all got to hear this for yourself. Y'all going to peep the video, and we're going to chop it up right after this. Yeah, there's like, you can get expenses paid and this, that, and the third. But then I just can't work with who I want to work with. That's why I can't work with who I want to work with. Hey, can you tell the mayor I'll call him right back that I'm filming? But you know, I would definitely stop to talk to him. But I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm broadcasting. See, that's 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 so the big talk the, right it's, now. It's just the way the world runs. But to be honest, I'm sick of these niggas. I'm sick of it, because you would think that after a while, niggas would leave you alone. But this consistent thing where people feel comfortable saying that they're gonna do whatever they want to do or can do to keep me out of business talk bad about me to other people, you know, come together and make a certain narrative and then get on TV and then have the nerve to speak on it and not, it, it makes it too obvious. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, I'm sick of that shit. So, okay, yeah. Who are we talking about? I'm talking, well, as of recently, it's Steve Stout. What is, yeah, so give us the, the backstory on that. Like, well, I mean, the, what's up with that? The problem with, I think my relationship with Steve Stout was sort of the way I was introduced to him. Mm -hmm. I, I've never had a certain level of respect to, for him. And, and the reason why is <clears throat> back when we started to kick it with Biggie Smalls, and you could ask D-Rock and C's and all of them, but they used to be, I guess Steve Stout used to be around a lot. You know, I don't know why, maybe because it was with Sony or whatever, and Steve Stout was up under Tommy Mottola. And that, that was always Steve Stout's model, is to get with a powerful white man and Paul's just become his nutsack. Like, he would, he would be the guy that'll say, look, I can get you the culture for free. So he had Tommy Mottola in his pocket at Sony, and he had um, Jimmy Iovine in his pocket at Interscope. Literally, Rockefeller was gonna be at Interscope. I went and met with Ted, uh, Jimmy Iovine, we were gonna do the deal, and this nigga literally fucked that deal up, uh, Steve Stout, and, and that happened. And same thing as Sony, I was dealing with Ron Sweeney and then Tommy Mottola goes over there, messes that deal up. But anyway, the way I met him was they were always talking about him and I'd be like, they'd be disrespect him. And, and they were like, yo, this dude, Steve Stout, Steve Stout, he's always in the office, he's pussy, blah, blah, blah. And they had a picture of him with a wig on with lipstick. You know what I mean? So apparently he had fell asleep in the studio and they put a wig on him and lipstick, and I'm like, well, did he wake up swinging on y'all? And they're like, hell no, we just laughed at him and shit. So that was, was where I, I, my first interaction with him. And, and then I, I, I met him and, 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 you know, it was whatever. And we, at that time, we were all like young executives. And I remember I'm in my 20s, early 20s. And I was telling him about what I was about to do with DJ Clue. I was gonna sign DJ Clue and make a compilation album and put out the make, make up. I was like the first guy to put out a mixtape as a real album. Mm -hmm. And I got wind that he went behind my back and offered Clue a deal and Clue was about to sign the deal. So I literally, with you know, a lot of Rockefellers and a couple of people from the block went up in that office while they were sitting around the table about to sign and had to sit down and say, now, what type of time, you know, you bug it. Like, bro, you're not going to just do that. Like, you know, come and take my ideas. No, I'm going to do a deal and go around my back and do a deal. So literally, I had to take those pens and put the Rockefeller deal right there. And part of the conversation is like, yo, like, you know, you were dude that my first interaction was niggas be putting wigs on you and, and put lipstick on you and you, and you don't do that, shit. They don't do shit. So he's obviously not a street guy, but he's playing with street people. You know what I mean? So... Why do you think they didn't have the level of respect they like, you know, because they ain't going to try everybody like that. 
because Steve is a trifling guy. So he, like, even in my conversations with him, and I'm not lying to you, I'm not hating or nothing, but like, he would tell me, like, yo, I hate niggas. I hate niggas. He would tell me that, fuck niggas. That was his model. And I just think maybe because he got abused by black people a lot, he didn't mind selling them out. So what he's made a business of is getting cool with white people and then getting people like Jay-Z to put their name on a Budweiser can. And that's what I was against. I'm like, how you going to be about champagne? Why would you have that man do a deal with Budweiser? That's below. It's just, again, it's like, and also a brand that's known to be for racist people. Yeah. So well, why would you put Jay-Z's full name on a $40 sneaker? So, like, I, no disrespect to Jay, but this was the last time I saw Steve, I had this conversation with him. I'm like, why would you put Jay's name on a $40 sneaker? Jay hasn't been able to sell anything with his name on it since then. You got to remember, there was a time that whatever Jay wore, everybody wore. He was the yeah, fly guy. After after them stupid ass collar shirts, Yankee hats, <laughs> he been not known as the fly guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No disrespect, but you yeah, know, yeah, I, yeah, we no lost disrespect. a lot of money at Rockwear with that because at Rockwear, they made me order a bunch of them shits to sell a year later. And I'm like, yo, they're going to be played out. So I ended up with like $40 million worth of fucking dress shirts and cufflinks with cuffling holes that we couldn't sell. So you give them bitches away. It, that's why I was like, I'm selling my interest. But the thing about it is what I don't like about it is he's been that person, Steve Stout, that when things were in the newspaper about me and Jay, and I go to like a LA read and say, yo, what's that all about? I'd be like, Steve put that in the paper. When I go to Leo Cohen and be like, yo, what's that all about? Steve put that in the paper. It was always Steve. And then even I look even to this year, Un gets on Vlad and says, Steve came to me and said that we have a conspiracy. We're going to sit down and we're going to put Damon out of business. He said it. So there was actually conversations and conspiring to put me out of business. To, to, to make a narrative, to make my name seem like it's something. Because you got to think about what I heard because I didn't look at the interview. Cause I'm, I'm it's just like I don't want to be triggered. But what the clips I saw, first of all, he's talking on business that's not his. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Speaking on another man's business. And the shit he said was like, you're, you're, number one, not that it's true, but what he said was, I'm running around the world with women, taking pictures with cameras. Like, since when do black people be mad about something like that? Number one, but number two, that means you were so mad that you couldn't get girls that you were actually 20 years later saying that that's a reason to fuck a business up. But in actuality, you could look at it on International Grizzly on America New. What I was doing was I was opening up Rockwear in Europe. And at that time, Jay was going around saying that I'm not doing Rockwear. I'm doing Sean S. Carter. So I had to personally go as an executive and open up Rockwear all around the world. Now, I'm not one of those guys that likes to run around with a lot of dudes. You know, you see me. Yeah, yeah. So you mad because my company is women? And when you're opening up a brand, aren't you supposed to have cameras? Yeah. Doesn't it sound like I was doing exactly what I was supposed to do? What I was doing was expanding our business. Promoting and marketing. Now, who are these people I was yelling at when I came back? You ever seen me on tape yelling at an artist other than Clue? And that would be just a conversation and a tone? No, you saw me yelling at Steve Stout or Leo Cohen or Julie Greenwald. And you always stood on that. I don't, I, I, or I, I never, um, I was always fighting for the artist. So if I was yelling at somebody, it was for the artist. So when I'm yelling at somebody, I'm not yelling at somebody for me. I'm yelling at somebody for Jay. I'm yelling at somebody for Kanye. I'm yelling at somebody for Beanie Siegel. I'm yelling at somebody for Cameron. I was doing the yelling so they didn't have to. That was my job. That's what you do as a boss. I'll handle that. Do you know? That's why when people bring people around me, I'm like, look, if you're going to bring someone in my personal space, if you can't stand up for them, if they fuck up and you can't take care of that, do not bring them around me. I should not have to deal with that. I'm only trusting them because of you. Oh, about you not feel worried. So if I'm the boss or I'm the CEO, I'm, you ain't got to do certain things. You just go be creative. It ain't for you to go do the rough stuff. Let me go do the rough stuff. So every time you see a camera of me yelling, 
It's at someone that's hurting a creative. But of course they're gonna try to make that the narrative. But what I'm thinking to myself when I saw that, he was. So comfortable talking about another man hurting a creative. But of course they're gonna try to make that the narrative. But what I'm thinking to myself when I saw that, he was so comfortable talking about another man's business in public, was what is he saying when I'm not around? So he going around being like, oh, look what Dame is doing. He's running around the world. He's getting all the girls. He's taking pictures. And now he's yelling. You know what I mean? So he's the guy that's in other people's ear telling them that this is the reason why you shouldn't fuck with Dame. Mm. But the thing about it is Steve started out with Nas and LL Cool J. So the way we got cool was arguing about who was better. Mm -hmm. And then it was a time, and no disrespect to Nas, but I guess he got cold and was a little fucked up financially. Steve would come around and tell us all of Nas's business. Going back and forth. No, be like, yo, this nigga Nas is fucked up and whatever, and he's fucked up. He'd tell me all his, I'd be like, damn. And then the same with LL. Like, tell me shit like LL was like driving a Honda and blah, blah, blah. Like, tell me things I don't need to hear. And I'm like, I thought that was your man. Yeah. See, that's that dishonorable shit. Is that the reason why you slapped him for all the dishonorable shit that he did? So what happened was, again, we used to argue about who had the better deal. Mm -hmm. And he made a bet with me about my deal for like 18, 20 grand. And, you know, I had the deal that I said I did, so he lost. And he was in the office with Jay, because, this, again, this is like, nah, we were doing well. And that's what, like, Steve is one of those guys that makes a living out of getting next to famous people and then going to white people and saying I could get them to do shit for a price. Mm -hmm. I, I could get Jay to get on Budweiser. Nobody else could. I could get Mary J. Blige to get on a bucket of chicken. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like shit like that. You, you know what I mean? Like that, that was how, that was his leverage is hanging around famous people, taking pictures with them, and then going to corporate people and saying, I know that guy. You know, I can get, this done I can get that done for you. Yeah. You know, and look at, the, look at the deals and the body of work that he has done. But what happened was we made a bet, and he's in the office, in my office, with Jay, and because Jay's tolerant of him, um, he's trying to throw a party with Jay and us at the Hamptons. And I'm like, I'm not throwing no party with this dude. He's like our op. You know what I'm saying? Like, why would he was, I don't even know why he's in the office. And plus, yo, bruh. And I had broke my foot. I was playing basketball with Little Richie. He started uh, One Oak. Mm -hmm. And I got a little issue. I ain't gonna get into that. But um, <laughs> we'll get to that later. Yeah. But um, for real. But um, I was playing basketball at Nike as I broke my foot in the Hampton, so I had a cast on. So I'm telling him, like, man, get out of here. You know, we not doing this, that. We start arguing. And I was like, also, oh, where my money at, bro? Like, you owe me 18 grand. And he said, I'm not paying. So you know where I'm from. You yeah. can't just bet somebody and tell yeah. them you're not paying them. So I walked over, I was like, yo, you need to get out of here. You feel me? And he kind of jumped and shit, and I was like, Yo, I got a broken foot. And like Steve's the kind of guy that if let's say he caught me one time, my crew would tease me forever. Even if he like caught me and I beat his ass, they'll be like, yo, you let Steve Stout deck you. You know what I mean? Like Steve's the guy that gets robbed and niggas crack him in the head with a bottle he tell. And that was another thing is I never liked the fact that he told on Puff. So I'm like, bro, you try to put that man in jail. Yeah, with the um, when he hit him in the head with the bottle. Like he the you know, he did a lot of crab shit. Like even so he got the lawyer for uh Yeah, for uh, I'll tell you, so so you know, again, I smacked him and shit. And I gave him an opportunity to have a fair one. Like, Pop smacked him and was like, yo, he asked me, he said, yo, did you just smack me? And I was like, yeah, nigga. And ain't nothing between us but the win. I'll give you a fair one. <laughs> you slapped the shit out of him. He asked you, did you just slap him? I had a Frank Mueller the left. Tack, and that shit broke. I remember it. Uh, and my cousin Darren just closed the door. Boom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was all in there. You know, but I was like, don't touch him. Let that man, because you know, I know how he is. He, he calls the police. You know what I mean? Because again, he had just sued Puff for that money, oh, for cracking man. him in the head with the bottle. So he really sued Puff, tried to, he testified. So for me, when I would see him in public, I'd be like, yo, you a snitch. You know, and even though it's not street rules, like to me, if you're going to be around street guys, then at, the you kind of have to respect a certain kind of rule. Like, you, you don't, number one, you don't try to put people in jail. No. Nah. You know? So I didn't like that. And I'd be on the, the red carpet at, at Cipriani's. I'm like, oh, he's a rat. And, you know, people go, What's it? why? And I do not say it, but yeah, he's a rat. You know, it, he's a rat. But to me, <laughs> that's my opinion. I mean, period. But 
So I smacked him, and I know that it, it, because he's not man enough to give a fair one, and again, it's too late now. I'm 52. I don't care if you went worked out, did Tybo, we're done. You know what I'm saying? Come on, he's still going to ask you, did you smack me? Well, th we had other interactions, though. So um, from that day on, I think since he got smacked, it's been a, a, a little sneaky kind of a thing to try to get people not to fuck with me and put things in the press. And, and if you look at his body of work, pause, like the people that he's done business with, you can ask those people what kind of guy he is. Mm -hmm. Like nobody really fucks with Steve except like certain people. You know what I mean? Because he tried to say that on the interview that the people in your uh, that you were affiliated with in your camp were wanting to go see other people, but now it's, it's coming to light. Like what that is was he talking about? Yeah, what was again? None of his business. Any Rockefeller business that he see, it's funny to me. If people like yo, you keep talking about Jay. First of all, I talk about a lot of people. It's because y'all are so scared to say anything about that man when his name is said. Everyone gets crazy, but I do believe that the people that say that are actual people trolling. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do if I was a coward. Is I'd pretend I'm somebody else and make a comment like that Everybody to make a narrative. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so I don't believe. I believe it's just like a camp and a, a campaign because. I don't see why, if that's my actual, I don't talk about what that man's doing. I'm talking about what he did. Things that happened. That happened yeah. with my memory. Yeah. So I talk about Kanye, I talk about Kevin Hart, I talk about Irv, I talk about everybody that I have actual experience about. Person, so, yeah, and, and I did a lot of business with him. So of course, if I'm talking about my past, that's gonna come up a lot. But those are facts. Yeah, but also people ask, but I'm just saying like people always say it, but then when like someone like Steve puts my name out there, has about shit that ain't got nothing to do with him, talks about another man's business. If I bring it back up, like narrative is important. Mm -hmm. And that's what they like to do is control the narrative. So the narrative for me is supposed to be like, oh, I'm, I just flip out on people. That's not what happened. You, you've you been around me for months. Mm -hmm. That's not what, but you see, I'll get mad. If I get mad, it's appropriate. It's like, I'm not getting, I'm, I'm human. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, but I don't like embarrass mean. people or abuse people. What I do is, like I was talking to Nicolette today. Mm -hmm. What happens when you tell me, like, if, like someone like Nicolette or my girl, they'll go, yo, I have a dream. And I want you to help me make that dream come true. And off top, I go, I don't want to do that because it's going to require me yelling at you to push you to be great, like a coach. And it's going to, it's going, unless you sign on for being all right with me yelling at you when you're not doing what you got to do, then I don't think it's good for you to do it. And then they'll be like, no, I'm down. But what happens is sometimes people forget they made that agreement because other people around are watching and like, yo, he be yelling at you like, nah, he's coaching me and I, I agreed to it, but he ain't got to explain that to you. It's none of your business. Yeah. So that's why I'm not stopping to say, nah, we made an agreement. Like we notice if I'm ever mad at, at Nicolette, it's like, yo, get your video out, get your shit out. Like you, you, you asked me to do that for you. I'm gonna do that for you. Same thing with Rocky. So now I got to yell at my girl, but that's what she's asked. You know what I'm saying? For that, that's all we yelling about. Like, yo, you got to get your book out. Like, blah, 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 you slipping. You told me if you if, if I catch you slipping to make sure you get where you got to go. But that's also you having love and want the best form. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all it is. Yeah. But if someone's looking at that from the outside looking in or someone forgets that, then they consider it like, oh, he's just yelling. Nah, I made an agreement with somebody. You don't know. Mind your business. Period. Yeah. You know? So. That's, that, that, that's deep. That's yeah. Deep. That's so, deep. So, so for him. It's just, I'm just sick of him 20 years later, still trying to create a narrative. He's done, he's comfortable doing it publicly, mm -hmm. but all that sneaky shit we did behind my back. And, and again, like literally when that thing happened with Un, he was in Un's hospital getting him a lawyer. And now he, I, 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 it, I just couldn't, I, I just couldn't see homie. Damn, I couldn't crazy. look the other way. I, I, I just, and then what he does is, he tells people that I'm crazy for wanting to be independent and fighting for it. What does he do? He makes that his business model. And now he's saying and talking about own your masters and all the things that he was telling everybody I was crazy. So he's been one, if you want to know who the conspiracy is, from my perspective, based on what I've been told and heard, it was Lior, Steve Stout, they used Jay-Z to do what they needed to do, Todd Moskowitz, um, and a couple of other punk ass niggas that I probably don't even know. But I can personally say that when I ask L.A. Reid, he'll tell me, yo, that was Steve Stout. When I ask 
Steve Stout, he'll tell me, yo, you know Jay's the one that set that meeting up with Lior. Oh, set that meeting up that you was yelling at. Like, they all snitch on each other. Yeah, but yeah, that's, see, that's the crazy they, part. They don't care, it. bro. There's no honor amongst these thieves. And when I say thieves, let me ask you a question. You ever seen a video of Steve Stout dancing? Or Paul's even knowing how to bob his head to a beat? No. He's not creative person. So I just feel like a guy like that resents everybody creative that took his girl. Obviously, it's on his mind because he brought it up. But at the end of the day, Steve, leave me the fuck alone, bro. Right? You know, oh. it's over, man. I smacked you. Oh, and another thing is, I ran into him once in a dark block. Yeah. With Rocky and this other girl. And your wife and when I was walking past him, because we live, both lived in Tribeca, he lived up the block. He's walking with this girl, muscular, with a bald head or whatever. And no disrespect to her at all. She was a good-looking woman, but she looked strong. And <laughs> How much she been? I, I don't know, but she, you know, she was, she was toned. I remember her, her arms was out. So he walking up, and I'm seeing this nigga. I just put out this currency record, and I'm about to watch this nigga. Like, I got this nigga, because I know everything he's done. And I always tell people that if to evolve, there's always, like, to get from one A to B to for your dream to come true, there's always a test. You got to pass the test. And it always happens right when some good shit's about to happen. You got to watch that test. I just said it, gave a whole meeting about it. Then here comes the test. Mm -hmm. So I'm walking up and Rocky goes, or Mackenzie, one of them goes, Dame, don't forget about the test. So I walk past, I say, yeah, fuck, she's right, right? So I walk past him and we looking at each other and shit. And I'm like, you bitch ass nigga, you snitch, right? And I, I I'm, I, you know, he with a girl. I'm like, yo, you know, you you walking with a rat. Like I would, that's how I would. You know, he's a rat, right? And he goes, you know what? I thought we took care of you anyway. Meaning all that bullshit, putting the paper and blah blah blah, detaching me from my art, all that. You know, that's called torturous interference. There's lawsuits that could come with that. And you know, I started. Yeah, that's why you bitch ass, you rat. He couldn't take it no more. So he kind of charges at me. And the girl jumps in and literally punches him in his face about six times. Boop, boop, boop. Little white girl. Hits him like six times. Word. Like he's all disheveled shit. And then, so I'm like, all right, come on. But he's like, and the girl grabs the girl that I'm with. And, and this is like, and she goes, you better get your man, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't scared of nothing. But I'm like, yo, cause I know this girl. You know, I'm like, don't swing on her. Like, like relax. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so then he starts to come back at me again. And I'm like, all right. And um, Rocky jumps in front of him and he kind of pushes her on the floor. So I'm like, yo, you just pushed a woman on the floor. You know what I'm saying? And you just told on Puff for hitting you in the head with a bottle. Y'all could tell on that nigga. I'm laughing at him. I'm like, you know, I'm not going to say nothing because he do nothing to me. Mm -hmm. They civilians. So the police come. He trying to run to his house. He looking all stupid. And I'm like, don't try to go nowhere. We know where you live. Right? So the police come. But I'm, la I'm laughing so hard because she's looking so stupid that um, they were gonna arrest me. So they, I guess they wrote it up. But long story short, he had to give 10 grand for that. So we definitely sent him a little lawsuit real fast. And I don't even wanna go through it with you. Send some money over. You know, me and Rocky wasn't even like that at the time, but I didn't like that he pushed a woman on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But he did pay and you could ask him about it, but he did pay because he pushed the woman on the floor and we went and bought a dog and we tricked all that money, bought computers and all that, had fun with it. Mm -hmm. So good looking for that, you know what I mean? But either way, that's the kind of um, nemesis. That's what we have. So you got to think, he took a smack and all this other shit. So his thing was, yo, I'll just fuck your career up as far as your relationship with Jay and blah, blah, blah. The, the problem with being um, having an artist like that, so many other people want to be his partner. Mm. So a lot of people try to like say you're not doing what you're supposed to do so that they could come in and do it for you. Mm -hmm. So I just felt like what he was saying was out of guilt and trying to have an explanation why Jay may have chose to work with him. But I wasn't really working with Jay. We wasn't doing like for him to say that my ceiling, like, look what I'm trying to do. Look at the things I do. Look how I, that's a direct to me trying to, to discredit all the forward thinking and the things I do for the culture to try to say that of all people in the world, Dame Dash could have hit a ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I was kind of, I'm yeah, really because just. Because he said even in the same sentence on interview, like he's intelligent. I'm not going to say he's not intelligent. He's not smart. He's very smart. He's very intelligent. Good question. Why is he talking about me at all? 
We ain't got no business together. That's what that's what everybody wants to know. Yeah, because she's the one that's always talking about me when no it's funny people that aren't used to being on the camera, they get too comfortable and they start, oh, this is just this is this this is how he always talk. So that means he always talk about me. It's but it's been twenty years. I don't understand why I would come up in that conversation. I didn't you know, I didn't understand. And Shannon Sharp interviewed me. And he owes me, because the condition of our uh, interview, because he's not like he paid me, was that he has to give me an interview. So I was surprised that Shannon didn't call me at least to get on the, and talk. You know, I, I feel like I was one of the first on him that did over a million that went viral. Yeah. You know, that's the one with the pink shirt. But I don't think Shannon liked the way that interview went. You know what I mean? I just thought he was asking me certain silly questions, so I was giving him the answers. I'm not a gossipy guy, no disrespect to Shannon, but it does seem like he's leaning a little more toward gossip in this point. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you read the comments, they'd be like, yo, like, you know, he's like the new Wendy Williams. Like, he's too strong to be Wendy Williams. Like, you don't say it the way it It just came out of clear blue. But, but it's just, all good, I think. He wanting, sp wanting to speak about you. Why? That, so, that, you know, it's funny because my man Sharon Barber, right, I guess was making some, some, some uh, leather goods for him. And he was looking for his leather goods from Sharon, so he called him and he picked up and I'm like, yo, what up? And he was acting like I wasn't there. I'm like, yo, why you acting like that? He said, like, cause you don't know how to give an interview. I'm like, you serious? Like, I felt like, I was like, I, I don't know if he was serious or not, but I think he was mad at the way that interview went, mm -hmm. went you know, but I didn't edit the shit. I didn't edit that interview. Mm -hmm. So Shannon, I believe that as a gentleman, you need, like you said, you were going to do, you owe me an interview. And you know, if you're going to bring my name up and all, at least holler at me so I could, uh, somewhat give my side of the story, but I'm not understanding why you're bringing me up at all. Steve, leave me the fuck alone, right? And, you know, get over the fact that I smacked the shit out of you, get over the fact that my girl or the girls I was with punched you all in your face and all of that. And, um, you know, just play fair. Keep my name out your mouth. It's not like when I do business, I say, yo, Steve Stout's this, that. I never talk about Steve Stout. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But. I'm not going to sell my culture out and put any artist's name on a brand that will compromise them. If they're an expensive brand, you don't put their name on something cheap. You never, 101, you never put your name on something that's cheap because you'll never be able to sell nothing in that name more expensive. Mm. Now that shit, that's, and, and, and I, I even asked her, I'm like, well, you know you fucked that man up in fashion. You know what I mean? And I just don't know. It's like, Sometimes I meet people, I get real close with them, pause, and after the money becomes, it's like a, a side, it, it, it's almost like they just become a different version of themselves, even down to their appearance. You know, there's like the cool version, and then there's the evil version of a person. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. and, and you can kind of see it when you look at what certain people look like before, yeah, and then after they hit the dark side, it's like, they look, they look completely different versions of themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't know what happened there. I, I prefer not to have no problems with my brothers. I hate going to court. I hate the fact that it's come to this. I don't know why anyone would keep trying to stop me from getting money. The only defense I have from people trying to make an inaccurate narrative of me that is fucking my money up is to be able to have a platform to defend myself so you could have a choice to see what makes sense and doesn't. Steve Stout, I'll talk to you any day of the week in public. And we can have this debate if you like. And any one of y'all, I would challenge you for a conversation. As a man, no fighting. That's not what the culture needs to see. But if you got something to say about me, you should be able to say it in front of me. Everything that I'm saying, I will challenge anyone to get in front of me and have that conversation with me. Now that was crazy right there when he said the girl the muscle bound girl he was with and then his girl two piece and stole steve stout mo that's crazy hit about six times mo that's crazy that you actually bringing that up bro. that is crazy on top of him getting slapped so i understand why he might feel some type of way but damn man you're a wild dude bo it's crazy but look this inside band i'm so way in the dmv into the next one i'm out